roll call? <laughs> uh, I can do that. Uh, Mary Sell, Chair. Here. Elizabeth Alley. Carrie Barsness. Nick Neptune. Here. Here, Tom. Here. Susan Hatchell. I'm here. Kelly Woodall. Here. Did I miss anyone? And Liz Hester, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And city staff, Eric Lamb. We've also got Paul Black and Barbara Godwin joining the call. And then we'll have other staff members um, later in the evening. And also, um, Dwight Atwell is an excused absence for today. All right, Madam Chair, you are free to proceed. So it's difficult for me, Eric. I apologize to have the agenda up and to have the screens up. Is there any way you could prompt us through, or I can also pull it up? Um, uh, your your first item uh, is a approval of the minutes from the previous meeting from okay. June twenty second. Yep. Um, could folks review um, on the link that was sent by Paul the agenda, the meeting minutes, and please let us know if you have any amendments to those. Susan Hatchell, uh, uh, motion to approve. Is there a second? I second. Thank you. Second from Nick Neptune. All right, we'll go through and do a roll call. Uh, Mary Sell? Uh, is in order, oh, to say that we approve? Oh, yeah, I approve the minutes. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, Elizabeth Alley? Approve. Carrie Barsness? Approve. Kelly Woodall? Approve. Liz Hester? Approved. Nick Neptune. Approved. Pierre Tong. Approved. Susan Hatchell. Approved. Very good. Thank you very much. Your next order of business is public comment. Great. Yeah. So for this, if there are any um, members of the public that would like to provide a comment, could you please use the chat function to indicate um, your interest in doing that? And then Eric will work to unmute you from there. Or, or you could also read their question if they would prefer that. We'll give that 30 seconds to a minute for folks to do that. I think we have somebody trying to come through, Eric, just so you know. Right. We'll give it a minute then. Is that Crystal Blaylock? That's correct. I know she's on the call or she's can see us. <laughs> I think she can hear us. <laughs> Are you seeing any chats come through, Eric? Oh, you're muted, Eric. <laughs> I have it. Uh, Crystal Blaylock G would like to speak. Ms. G, you're unmuted. You can go ahead. Oh, hi. Hi, guys. Hi. I have never done this before, so I apologize, but I was speaking with Nick Neptune this weekend, and he invited me to kind of share an experience we had in East Raleigh last week um, and some of our traffic issues. Um, so if I'm off topic, can you please let me know? Um, I mean, what you, I'm sorry, what was that? I just said you're you're totally good. We're happy to have you. Thanks for joining us. You can go uh, ahead. Um, okay. Well, I will be really quick. So I live in East Raleigh on the 200 block of Haywood Street, and um, we need we need a little more traffic and speed control on this side of Raleigh. Um, our houses are very close to the street, and they're narrow, and um, not every street has sidewalks. Um, uh, the example, the, the story I was sharing with Nick on, about last week, I uh, was in our front yard with some neighbors. Uh, I would say about half of the houses on our street have kids that are elementary school age or less. And they, um, our neighbor's kids were playing with their dog in the sidewalk while we were talking. And the, um, it was, uh, they were playing with the dog and the dog got a little into the street and a car came out of nowhere and just, you know, it ran, it, the dog got run over in front of everybody. There was nothing we could do. It just happened very fast, but it definitely brought up a conversation with our entire street about um, how we've all kind of been avoiding how 
scared we are to be in our front yards. We all hang out in our backyards. Um, and so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, any any uh, guidance with how to get maybe more stop signs or speed humps or anything like that in our neighborhood um, or any type of traffic diverging systems would be mm -hmm. a really, a really nice uh, information to have. I'm really sorry to hear about your neighbor's dog, Crystal. That sounds really traumatic. I'm sorry uh, I have to deal with that. It, it was, um, and it, it was really traumatic for the kids too. It was a, it was definitely like a, um, a big eye-opening moment for all of us because it just, it really did just happen fast, and it was a complete accident. Um, and then the the car just kept going, so that was, it's just kind of part of living downtown, but also something maybe we can manage and make it a little, little better. Well, and and could I, Eric, is is it okay for me to? Uh, say something here. Sorry, I don't, I don't know what's appropriate or what's inappropriate. Um, that's up to the commission and to the chair. If you'd like. Yeah, to please, please, discussion. Nick. That's fine. Yeah, it's just a further comment based on um, what uh, Crystal shared with me over the weekend. As far as you know, number one, this particular street, uh, Haywood, it's it's it has seen an increase uh, in just. Uh, I guess cut through traffic, speeding, cut through traffic, you know, down this this one particular street. Uh, so, you know, she's looking for traffic calming measures. Um, but then I think what really got me beyond that particular issue is that you had a neighbor who apparently, you know, it's it's taken some time for folks to kind of get to know each other, you know, in the neighborhood. And if I understood, Crystal, what you were sharing earlier correctly, you know, it sounds like this was one of the first occasions the neighbor was really making an effort to get out and to get to know, you know, her community. And in that context, you know, one of her new puppies is just, I mean, it's just taken out by the vehicle. And, you know, that, that I think that is, a, a, you know, is enough to warrant um, some sort of uh, action or response. But what really gets me even beyond that is that, uh, you know, the, the puppy could have easily been a child. And I mean, I know we, we've had this conversation. It seems like every every meeting we, we have, we're having this conversation around, you know, a pedestrian or a cyclist. And so, you know, it's just, it was, um, again, just particularly striking. And uh, I think it's, you know, as commissioners, you know, our responsibility to, to speak up and advocate uh, where we can and when we can. Um, and so that's that's I just really appreciate Crystal you, you participating and uh, you know I certainly I know how deeply the entire commission cares about this community and pedestrian and cyclo safety but uh, here again it's just another example you know it may have been a puppy I mean that that should be enough to warrant us to action but uh, just imagine if that had been a, a you know a school aged child you know so anyways thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there are definitely some resources, Crystal, that do you and Nick have each other's contact information um, now? Nick, did you happen to get like Crystal's email address? I'm in contact with Crystal, yes. Okay, so let's, um, there are certainly um, longer term processes as far as the ability to have traffic calming um, petitions. Is that correct, Eric? Would that be a petition process? But also some interim steps that might be able to the the stop signs I noticed got installed in a pretty quick cadence this six or nine months ago. There was is that still a program you guys are implementing? Yes. So those are some shorter term. The stop signs specifically, I think, if this is a candidate location, could be a, a faster term solution. So I would just like to put Crystal in touch with those resources, and of course, we're happy to facilitate whatever we can on our level. And I know staff will work to to work on it as well. Absolutely, and, and something like this, uh, and I'll tell you, someone who has a new puppy, uh, I can tell you that, that um, this is not acceptable behavior, um, and, and we work hard to try and keep our streets safe. And so, um, yeah, we'd be happy to um, put you in touch with our traffic calling program yeah. folks and see what kind of countermeasures. It's happened to me. My dog was hit in front of my house and killed. I know this pain is really terrible. I'm really sorry about that. Um, thank you. I will, I'm jotting all this down. So it it sounds like Eric, you'll be able to maybe with me as a conduit to to Crystal provide some resources for. Her? Absolutely. Okay. 
Thank you. And thank you, everybody. Again, I know everyone on the commission and certainly city staff is well aware of the issues. Um, and it's just, it just so happens here again is, you know, it's another real life example as to why the work is so important. So thank you, everybody. And Crystal, thank you again for joining us. Yes, thank you, Crystal. Eric, do we have any other public comments coming through? Come in. All right. Well, hopefully we'll be able to provide her some resources there. Um, I apologize. Is it um, the updates from subcommittees now that we're moving on to, Eric? So our next item is actually uh, presentations this evening. Uh, and we've got oh, okay. two presentations from staff on city projects. Um, the first, let me get this lined up here. Bear with me, please. Uh, first, we have Beth Quinn from our Engineering Services Design Construction Division, uh, and she's going to be talking, I believe, Beth, do I have this right? You're going to be talking about the Marsh Creek um, project? That is correct. Very good. Let me see if I can get the presentation up here. And then once I can figure out how to share my screen. There we go. There we go. Are you able to see the presentation? Yep. All right, Beth, go ahead. Great, thank you, Eric. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for allowing me to come and present to you tonight. I'm going to present on the Marsh Creek Road and Trey Wick Road Improvement Project. Um, I'm the, the PM of this project for now. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I have control of the slides or, or Eric, you advance them? Okay, I got you. Thanks. thanks. Um, our design consultant for this project is HDR, um, and we'll touch on a little bit of the, the project history later on. Um, but the purpose and background of this project is really to focus on enhancing the mobility and connectivity for pedestrians, bicycle, as well as vehicular traffic, um, but while focusing on the safety throughout this corridor. Um, this is funded by the 2017 bond and it's about 1.4 miles in length. Next slide. So this is a, a overview of the project limit. Uh, you can see it starts over near or at Capitol Boulevard. Um, this is going to be the Treywick Road section um, and then it, it heads to the east to New Hope Road via Marsh Creek. One thing to note here is that Treywick Road is a city of Raleigh road and Marsh Creek is maintained by um, the Department of Transportation. Throughout this presentation, I'll show you a few different um, examples of cross sections, but while we have this map up, I want to kind of explain to you several of the kind of the um, we've broken them into segments. So. From Capitol Boulevard to Stony Brook, um, this is going to be a three lane section and this is going to be where it's mostly commercial and this allows for um, more free movements uh, in and out of, of the commercial businesses. From Stony Brook then to Treywick Road and where Treywick meets Marsh Creek, this is going to be a two lane section with intermittent turn lanes. So there's a few turn lanes for the higher volume um, turning movements. Then from Treywick Road to New Hope Road, it's going to be a three lane section um, with medians near the Wilburn Elementary School. And again, I'll show you kind of examples of those, those cross sections later on, but just wanted to kind of show you as we have this up. Next slide. So the project history of this back in April of last year, city council 
requested a listening session and the focus of this was to get more input from the public. Um, and so it was after that then um, that we were able to um, we were authorized to issue the award the, the design contract to HDR, which occurred in July 2019. We had our first uh, pre-design public meeting in February of 2020. Uh, it's probably one of the last in-person meetings we had prior to the pandemic. Um, and we presented two different alternatives to the public there. Um, based on the feedback from that, we came up with a recommended alternative to proceed through design and have now progressed to about 25% design. We have that staff review meeting tomorrow. And today we are presenting to, to BPAC. Next slide. So this is an example of the recommended typical section for the two lane with intermittent turn lanes. So you can see that it's it's generally two lanes. You can see in the in the down the road that that it will widen out for turn lanes again for intersections that have that warrant the larger uh, turning movements. In addition to this, there will be a six foot sidewalk on the south end of the project and a ten foot wide multi use path along the north side of the project. This is an example of the three lane section. Again, the, the multi use path and the, the sidewalk are consistent throughout the entire project. Uh, currently, we are including a six foot buffer landscape buffer um, between the curb and gutter and both of those. Um, and again, the three lane section is is from Capitol to Stony Brook during uh, where the commercial area is. And then on, on Marsh Creek Road again, that's the, the NCDOT maintained roadway. We are proposing a roundabout at the intersection of Treywick and Marsh Creek. And so right now this is, is the design that, that has come up. Um, we've again been working with staff um, on the design of this to make sure that um, there's enough deflection to, to reduce speeds um, and things like that. For, for those of you that, that aren't too familiar with this project, um, as you're coming east, on Treywick Road to this intersection, there is a, um, a free flowing right hand turn lane down onto Treywick Road and we are removing that. Again, all of the movements will be through the roundabout and this is done to increase the safety, um, you know, especially for pedestrians and bicycles in this area. Um, and you can see that there are um, pedestrian refuges throughout the, the median islands around the roundabout. Um, and we'll be working as we progress through the design, um, adding crosswalks and things like that as well. So this is an example of what we're proposing in front of the elementary school right now. Right now there are existing medians. And so we wanted to maintain that, make sure that we're um, maintaining the safety um, so on the, the right hand of the screen, you can see this is where the cars enter and then they exit um, on the left hand side. The red um, median that's colored in on the bottom left corner is we're proposing that to be where um, we're going to add a crosswalk and a pedestrian refuge there to connect anybody that's walking up the sidewalk that needs access to the school. There will also be additional sidewalks as well throughout the project. Um, but this also then allows for room um, for, for uh, turning vehicles in. And again, just kind of a, a safety slowing method um, of the vehicles near the school. Um, and then to the further east of this would be a, a three lane section as well up to, to New Hope. So from the public feedback, uh, we 79% of the public agreed that the proposed design concept addressed the safety um, and connectivity for pedestrians and cyclists. So we were happy to see that um, out there. There's a lot of goat trails already. 
Um, so, so people are using it to walk and everything. And so we, you know, want to get that infrastructure out there. 79% of the feedback um, also think that it'll increase the connectivity both to transit stops um, along the corridor. There is a transit stop um, near the school um, and we will be working with transit as well, um, you know, on the location of that as well as any sidewalk or I'm sorry, crosswalks for the crossing and the connectivity of that. Um, but it also connects a lot to the neighborhoods to the north um, and I know a lot of people cycle kind of through there as well. 59% of the public were in favor of the roundabout um, at the intersection of Treywick and Marsh Creek. And um, it's also favorable um, with the, the NCDOT as well. And this is why we have uh, proceeded with this in our design. The tentative schedule moving forward after tonight, we are looking to have a design public meeting in September. Again, we have our internal staff review meeting of the 25% plans tomorrow. And then once we're able to address any comments on that, we'll be going to the public to present um, these alternatives or this alternate design and um, looking for feedback um, given the time, again, this will likely be an online only um, feedback where we will post a video presentation and then have a, a survey as well. Um, but we have a we have created a, a whole new kind of um, public outreach during during the times now. After that, the design will progress right away. Acquisition is tentatively scheduled to begin in early 2021. And we will have an advanced design public meeting when the plans are final in the spring of next year and looking to um, begin construction in late 2021. Our recommendation to BPAC tonight is for um, to continue with the project design with the current typical sections. Um, as recommended both by staff and preferred by the public. So that's what we would like your input on tonight. Awesome, thanks for the presentation, Beth. Um, should I just open it up to commission members that might have questions or comments now? Absolutely, and I just wanna add uh, just a couple of things real quick. One, that the, the public involvement work that our engineering services staff has done during the pandemic um, has really been an eye opener for us. We have started um, doing um, project presentations on YouTube and um, we're getting hundreds of hits on these projects and generating substantial amounts of, of um, comments, um, much more so than the traditional meeting in person type format. Um, and we're probably likely to, to incorporate that permanently as part of our routine and our suite of, of public outreach uh, opportunities. So um, the second thing I want to point out with this one is, is this project has evolved very nicely and it's really focused around being a, um, a bicycle and pedestrian focused project. So um, uh, I'm really happy with the, the work that they've done this so far and glad that we've garnered a lot of public support on this. Thanks for those comments, Eric. That's helpful. And it's great to know that folks are accessing this information independent of being able to meet in person. That's encouraging. Um, I'd like to open up the floor to other folks that might have questions or comments about the project. Mary, I had a, a, a question for uh, Beth. Thanks so much for being here and presenting this. And um, and I, and I think your presentation was was very good and thorough. And I appreciate that. I guess I, I'm not quite clear about how the existing right away compares to the new right away and what kind of loss of vegetation we might be having. Uh, I don't think because of the speed and everything, there could be any trees replaced in that six foot grass verge. So if you could just maybe address um, the width of the right away and what vegetation, I mean, is there, is there, additional clearing happening? Are there any additional trees that will be able to be replaced? Um, there likely will be. I don't have 
a, uh, a specific answer to that right now. Um, again, we are just completed the 25% the design. Um, I know that, that there is, you know, a landscape architect on the team that will be looking at that. Again, we have it. <clears throat> this project is a, a little unique in that half of it is city maintained and half of it is DOT maintained. So we, right. we may have a little bit more leeway on the city side versus um, the DOT side. Um, but, you know, we're definitely looking at, um, you know, how to how to replace some of that vegetation. I should also yeah. note that. Oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say that um, starting back from the listening session on this, this has been a, a very high priority with council specifically to reduce the right of way impacts um, to the, the residents along the corridor. A lot of the houses, especially on the north side of this, are close to the roadway and um, they, they want to minimize um, any impacts to that. And so initially we had some, some alternate designs that we had considered, um, but that also played into what we selected to kind of minimize any of that kind of sprawl in the, in the right of way. Okay. Yeah, I, I understand completely how tight these little areas are and, and uh, you know, how pushed things get. So, like I said, it looks like it's a, it's a very um, good attempt to get us the multi-use uh, lane we want in there and the sidewalks. And so I, I think that's great. I, my only concern is, you know, we really need to push as hard as possible to make sure that they're nice shady places. If you went outside today, you know why. <laughs> um, you know, Absolutely. a shade tree. Yeah, exactly. A shade tree can reduce the ambient temperature 15 degrees and so you know to make a really lovely place you know i don't know on which side of the sidewalk it would be really lovely if if we can put back trees wherever possible absolutely thank you that's all i've got thank you other questions or comments uh, you, you got Miss Alley and Miss Barsness asking to speak. Okay, I'm not able to see. Are people raising hands? I'm, I apologize. Okay, I can't see. I'm going to change my settings so that I can look at the grid. And go ahead, um, Sally. You can go first. Thanks. Um, thanks for this presentation. Um, I am familiar with this road, and I think it's going to be a great improvement. Um, so, uh, one question for today, and then just a couple of items that I'd love to see as this design um, progresses beyond 25%. Um, wanted to echo what Susan said about street trees, at least on the part that is city controlled, six feet is more than enough to plant a street tree at the back of curb. So hope to see those and depending on the speed limit, hope to see them on the NCDOT portion too. It'll uh, provide a nice buffer for the um, pedestrians and the cyclists. Um, also wanted to see um, if any additional street lights will be included in this area as it is quite dark um, in the evening. And then wanted to ask uh, if, um, if it is within the scope of this project, address the speed along this road and as that relates, whether or not we'll be marking any um, crossings. Here, um, this is a long stretch without any safe place to cross and particularly um, being familiar with with that school site, you might as well just put a hawk in right now. That that curve people go very, very quickly. Yes, thank you for your uh, comments and questions. Um, street lighting in general, we, we do try to include that in our improvement projects. So I will be following up. I know we're again, just kind of getting started on some of the utility coordination, uh, but we generally work with Duke um, to add those throughout our projects. So um, uh, if it's not included, you know, there will be a push for that, um, but I, I believe it is. Um, and, and again, I know we, we have been looking at um, where we can include the crosswalks and provide um, um, safe crossing, not only at the school, um, we're looking at another location that is down um, between the school and the roundabout. Um, I believe it, it's Pinehurst Drive, maybe that, that we're looking at, if you're familiar with that, um, but, but definitely um, looking um, to increase the safety. And so um, I know the speed limit has um, been an issue and, and also, um, you know, vehicles not going the speed limit. Um, <laughs> a lot of people do feel somewhat run off the road there. It's a real straight um, shot. 
it, it is, um, you know, and, and so, um, you know, we will, we will look at that, um, you know, but, um, you know, again, something that we'll have to coordinate with DOT as, as well. Um, so again, we're, we're really focusing on improving the safety of this corridor. And so what we can do within the scope, um, we'll definitely be, be looking at that. I think that's great. And just the addition of these facilities are great, but while we're out there and while we have the contracts, if there's, you know, even deflectors on um, deflecting traffic, just like small islands on the part that we do own where you have room for intermittent turns, if, if there's anything we can do to, to um, just provide a little bit of friction, I think would be great. Um, and my, my last item, and then I will be done. Um, a list for uh, 50% would I'd love to see um, the use of ramp type driveways, um, particularly closer to Capitol Boulevard. There's so many people taking right turns out of those commercial businesses that they're not they're not looking and um, and and I think that would be a way of both giving pedestrians visibility and making the car slow down a little bit. Thank okay, you, thank you very much. I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Kari, were you the other um, comment? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, Elizabeth, you actually answer or you more or less answer my question. Um, but I guess I wanted to get a little clarity around that. It was specifically around the um, elementary school where there was, and you had mentioned this, I didn't quite follow what you were saying that you were looking to add more crosswalks, but I mean, the current design that you have has no crosswalk across Troywick Road. It only has the crosswalk um, right in front of the school, but you could not actually get from the sidewalk to school, you have to be on the um, the wider multi multimodal path. And so I so I understand that you guys are working on that and you're looking to find more ways to either do stoplights or more crosswalks, whatever it might be. But my question is, why is that not in this first um, phase? Why, do, why don't you have that built in already? And this is more just a, a knowledge question because I'm very new to the board uh, commissioning. I don't understand how all of these steps that you guys go through um, from design to construction, how it all works. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, you know, so so we're at 25% uh, design. So essentially the, the pre-design, we use, um, you know, GIS type data to just present kind of alternate theories. Um, this is the first design that we use, that we developed using the actual survey data that our surveyors collect out there. Um, and, and we're looking kind of more, um, you know, at the initial layout and things, but we are considering where to, to add the crosswalks, um, adding that, that second median at the, at the school, um, where mm -hmm. it's coming out, um, that will begin to, to come into or, or create a pedestrian refuge. We'll, we'll also, the, the other one that we're considering, we understand that that crossing the street. And so, so this is by no means the only crosswalk location that we're considering for this project. So we're considering locations um, in between the school as well as the intersection and potentially at, at other locations as well. Um, and it's just a, a factor of how the, the uh, project progresses based on the, the data that we have um, and so, you know, again, we have our staff review meeting tomorrow and I'm, I'm sure that they will they'll bring this up as well. Um, and, and then we will kind of, um, further the design to, to the 65%, which will be our next milestone, um, that'll be happening next year. Um, so even though it may not be on those plans, um, the actual crosswalks are planned. It just comes further later on. Once the design is more final, once we get to the pavement marking plans and things like that. But we are considering where they are going and adding pedestrian refuges and, and things like that. Okay, that's helpful. I appreciate it. Thank awesome. you. And, and Beth, this is Mary. I think I just had two really quick um, questions slash comments. When I did the Google Earth view, I could see a New Hope. It looks like there's only one crossing right now that connects you onto Treywick Road there. Um, are you guys going to be making those whole and be doing crossings on both sides to connect folks that might be wanting to cross over New Hope, um, or is that outside the extent of this project? So we have looked at this intersection and actually, um, you know, I have to give credit to Jason Myers um, and Eric's group in coming up with a, a good plan at that, at that crossing. So um, we have talked about it because if, so right now it's only on the southern end 
um, of right. new hope where people can cross right now. And um, so, right, you know, we, we want to maintain and, and upgrade that as well. Um, and and talking about, well, are people really going to, to cross Marsh Creek to then cross New Hope? Um, you know, if if really they're they're heading north to say the, the park that's up there. Um, so we're looking mm -hmm. at it and we're looking at the, the signal. So that'll be part of the design. It's it's part of, um, you know, so Jason had developed a, a plan of how we could incorporate that into the signal and, and get the pedestrians to to cross. So. Um, that one needs a little bit okay. more investigation and coordination with the DOT, um, but definitely something okay. um, that, that we're considering. Awesome. I'm already looking at it. Cool. And then my other question was, um, as we move more toward multi-use paths versus a conventional bike lane on some of these cross sections, um, one, I think we are we are gaining some right away when we do that, or are we... Um, is is that a net gain for the city? Because I would like us to think about different ways we're investing in the corridor, whether it's thinking about the, the intersection treatments, um, I think are really important. And some of those have already been brought up, but as we are, if we're proposing a whole new paradigm shift in how we are building our facilities, I think it needs to have some accompanying um, features like intersection to be safe. Um, so that's just something I would like us to be continually as we look at the multi-use path as a more standard uh, application, how are we making sure that that entire corridor is whole and safe? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, so in general, you know, providing the multi-use path on one side and a sidewalk on the other, um, if, if that's what we're limited to, that requires less right away than say the bike lanes in addition to, um, you know, sidewalks on both sides. So I think right. that, that we are, you know, in that sense, you know, we're able to provide, um, you know, some of the infrastructure that's needed um, at a less um, detriment, maybe, to some of uh, of the residents along the side, um, along the corridor. Um, mm -hmm. So I mean, I think that, you know, from our previous interactions, you know, with, with the commission, um, that has been our, um, you know, what we're moving forward with on all of our projects um, is the multi-use path. Um, on at least one side of the corridor, uh, if, if possible. Right. And as we see those cost savings from having to acquire less right of way, um, if that is ever a consideration, I would like us to see us rolling those investments into making these corridors more, more people oriented. And I do have, you know, I don't, we're not doing anything special on our crossings, are we right now with the multi use path? We're not, it's not getting green paint or any type of, um, additional enhanced signage to indicate that it's a shared space for, for bikes and pads, et cetera. I think that there could be some ways that, some really low cost ways in the big scheme of things that we could be investing in the corridor in a different way. Do you know what I mean? And that's an iterative conversation, but I just want to think about those things. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I mean, my division works um, hand in hand with um, transportation planning and, and Paul's group as well. And so, um, you know, any anything that they kind of bring to us, you know, we we're we're happy to work with them and, and incorporate, um, you know, what we can, you know, within our project specifically, you know, um, to make sure that the pedestrians and bicyclists are safe and know what they can do and and um, promote that as well. So we will yeah, um, do just, what we can to support. I just, yeah, I suspect we'll see some green paint when we get to the 65 percent plan. Okay, awesome. <laughs> we'll really appreciate your time, Beth. Thank you all very Thanks much. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Beth. Beth, are you looking for a, 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 any kind of motion at this point, or you come back at another meeting with 65%? So, so I just, I, at this point, you know, our, our like I said, our, our next thing is to progress to 65% plans once we, you know, present to internal staff, and then we'll have um, our public touch point in September. So I would just like to, um, you know, ha make sure that we that the, the commission is okay to for us to proceed with the proposed typicals as far as you know the sidewalk and multi use path um, as we're progressing through the design. Do you need a vote on that? It shouldn't at this point. Okay. We'll, we'll, when we bring it back at sixty five percent, we'll ask for an endorsement at that point. All right. Sounds great. Thank you, Beth. Great. Thank you. Have a good night. 
uh, um, I just like to add something right as we fi finalize this. I think it's fabulous that we've got this change that we're seeing these plans so much earlier because I think that there, you know before it felt like we couldn't make any substantive comments uh, that we're going to be able to help the project be a better project. So I just want to thank everyone for the opportunity to see these projects at 25 percent and to be able to make comments about street lights and pedestrian crossings and trees and things like that, while there's still an opportunity for those things to be um, incorporated. And thanks so much, everybody. Yeah, this project is really going to be a linchpin for this part of town. This is one of the driest areas in terms of bicycle provision infrastructure in the city. Um, I know when I was working with the Capitol Boulevard folks, they said, hey, we want to put a bunch of stuff in the priority plan. And I said, I'm not going to be able to connect to anything. I have two projects. They're getting this one done. And ideally, this will be a key segment connecting someday under Capitol Boulevard, I hope, to Brentwood. And Brentwood all the way across to the Noose River Trail is the long-term vision. And this, this knocks out a big piece of it. Sweet. Rock and roll. So Madam Chair, your next item is an update on uh, city sidewalk projects. And if you'll give me one second to make some promotions here. Oh, thanks, Eric. <laughs> Uh, we have Reuben Moore from the city's engineering services uh, department to talk about our sidewalk projects. From Reuben. You're muted, Reuben. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yep, we got you. There you are. All right. Hey, uh, thanks for uh, letting me come before you tonight. Um, the projects that I have, we have two of them. Um, we're very uh, inventive in engineering services and we came up with the qualifiers Group B and Group C. Uh, group A is a project that was completed a couple years ago. Um, we're just going down the alphabet with these. But I wanted to uh, talk a little bit more specifically about what these are. Uh, group B is uh, kind of in the same neck of the woods. Uh, next slide, please, Eric. Up in the North Raleigh in the Capitol Boulevard corridor, uh, these are all state roads, NCDOT roads. We're doing sidewalk infill along Spring Forest Road, East Millbrook Road, and North New Hope Road. Uh, and heard y'all's conversation about speed limits on the last project and it's some quick checking. Uh, these are currently posted at 45 miles per hour. Um, they are, uh, like I said, infill projects. There's a lot of sidewalk up in this area that was put in through uh, redevelopment and we're addressing closing these gaps. So this, these, this project makes a lot of good connections to existing sidewalks. Um, group C, uh, three of the four of these uh, streets are also NCDOT roads, uh, Capitol Boulevard, Wake Forest Road, and Wade Avenue are the DOT roads. And if you look on this map to the south in Raleigh, we have Maywood Avenue, and then it wraps around to Lake Wheeler Road. And my understanding of Lake Wheeler Road is that we're going to be working on the city maintained portion of Lake Wheeler Road. Uh, the NCDOT maintenance starts at Centennial Drive and heads south. So that's the, that's the locations for these projects. Uh, just some background, the sidewalk projects originated out of the transportation planning prioritization methodology, which uh, I'm assuming y'all are familiar with, but uh, looks at a lot of different factors that try to gauge the uh, the, the need and future usefulness of having sidewalks in the area. Uh, looks at some of the things like pedestrian involved crashes, uh, household income, um, density of population, proximity to transit, and so forth. Um, and the projects were funded through capital improvement bonds passed both in 2013 and in 2017, and we're currently fully funded for construction um, but as I give you the background of these projects, you'll see they started quite early uh, back in 2013 and 2014. Uh, 
first with the comprehensive plan in 2013 and then city council approving design contracts with uh, Stewart for group C and Arcadis for group B. But then in 2016, we had insufficient funds for uh, continuing design work. And so the design work was halted before the design work was completed. And then we were able to program additional funds in 2018 and reestablish contracts with those firms in late 2018. And early in 2019, we had, uh, I'm sorry, Eric, I was supposed to give you notice on slide advancement. Um, yeah, background I talked about, bonds I talked about, one more. Okay, project history, one more. I'm sorry. Um, so we, we did a, a new public meeting for both of these early in 2019 uh, for Group C and Group B. And then uh, today in July of 2020, we're trying to finalize plans, get our final reviews in and get the uh, permits completed. Uh, next slide. So the scope of the project right now, cost-wise, we have about $3 million for Group B and 3.2 million for Group C. And we're installing six foot wide concrete sidewalk. We're also making sure the curb ramps in this area are up to the current standard. And then there's uh, quite a bit of traffic signal work at existing traffic signals where we're, uh, if we don't already have them, we're upgrading to the high visibility crosswalks, the countdown pedestrian signals. Uh, push button activation, and there's several places where we're putting the, these signals exist on divided four lane roads, and we're putting in pedestrian refuge islands in the in the medians. The schedule we're on now uh, for Group B, we're mostly complete with property acquisition and uh, plan on advertising for bids. Um, that actually should say uh, that we have a date in January already picked out for advertisement. Uh, by winter, award a construction bid and uh, give notice to proceed and um, be a, probably a year or a little bit more for construction to be completed. Uh, group C, uh, we're actually just getting started. Uh, probably only have about 10% of the property acquired at this point. Um, but I think the uh, I think project's going to accelerate to where construction probably will be going on about the same time as Group B, uh, with a summer of 2022 completion. Uh, so that's kind of where we are. Um, does anybody have any questions on the on the projects? Uh, and Ruben, I just want to add one thing and show a map here real quick. Um, yeah. The, the projects that we've got going up here in the, the mini city area, uh, I'll remind the commissioners that uh, a few years ago, we completed all of the sidewalks on the section. I don't think you can see my cursor, can you? Um, all the sidewalks on the section of Capitol Boulevard, uh, north of uh, Cavalry, uh, between Cavalry and Old Lake Forest. And now under construction, we have sidewalks um, under construction along Green Road. So we've We've made mm -hmm. some substantial strides at filling in these gaps in this area, which has got some fairly high demand for walkability uh, with all these successive projects. I'm really happy with the way these are, have come together. And then with the group, uh, there we go, Group C projects. Uh, again, this this Wade Avenue project is one that we've had a lot of public feedback and a lot of interest in, especially with some of the new development that happened in that area and being able to, to knit these together and, and create a cohesive sidewalk has been a, a long-standing goal. Thanks for that context and additional information, Aaron. If folks want to raise their hands, I've, I've got the grid up. Go ahead, Sally. Um, just wondering if it is within our scope to do any um, intersection improvements as part of these sidewalk installations. I know of at least one fatality pedestrian fatality with, within these project bounds. Mm -hmm. So if it's at a signalized intersection, then I would say yes. Um, the, the things I mentioned about the traffic signal, make sure we have visibility crossings, uh, make sure that the countdown pedestrian heads are in place. Um, 
push button activation and then on the divided the roads that have like four lanes or more and they have a median uh make sure that there's a refuge island in the middle yep all of that exists at this intersection already thanks to your hard uh -huh. work which i'm not negating still okay. still there's fatalities happening i know you which can't get the number to zero but that's the goal yeah yeah definitely is the goal but is the intersection you need to look at the next projects? level yeah it's at millbrook and capital millbrook and capital yeah yeah the pet countdown is and just you know, these intersections sometimes where people are are taking roads out and like tapping the brakes. Um, so know that that is might be a little bit pushing your scope, and certainly mm -hmm. has competing interests within CDOT and traffic volumes. But you know, yes. uh, because we have done such good work filling in the gaps up here, you do have more pets. You have a lot of demand. You got mm -hmm. a lot of bus riders. You know, it's great that we're doing these projects. Um, but it, it is inducing pedestrian demand, which is wonderful, but we need to yeah. welcome people into, into safe crossings. Yes. Oh, go ahead, Kari. A uh, quick question. When I was looking at the, all of the individual maps um, showing the proposed uh, crosswalks, I was looking at the Wade one and there were two pictures and on the right there is a big um broad axe through part of that project and it said that project mm -hmm. part was deleted what mm -hmm. is that all about so there's a section of wade avenue that was originally part of this project uh from daniel street down to basically a dead-end sidewalk on the west side of st mary's and mm -hmm. we were going to close that connection mm -hmm. but that section of wade avenue has been picked up by the ncdot for a safety project um and so their safety project would basically wipe out what we're going to do um because they're going to be widening wade avenue and that project will include the sidewalk when that project gets done okay it's just going to be done under a different project okay when are they proposing widening that wade avenue there i didn't know that um it's just for a very small section just in that area between daniel street and uh well west of St. Mary's. Uh, it's probably not more than a few hundred feet. Um, okay. I, I do not know the schedule. I've talked to several folks and I, I don't think there is a committed schedule from NCD on the, excuse me, NCDOT on that. Um, okay. Eric, Eric might know more than I do on that matter. Uh, I do not actually on this one. Okay. So, uh, okay. I need to speed too. Related, I'm going to interject for a second. This is Elizabeth. Um, I think that when the property at the northwest quadrant of the intersection of St. Mary's and Wade is redeveloped, that state owned property, that mm -hmm. the transportation plan shows a pretty significant right of way take there to straighten out that curve, curve a little bit. Is, mm -hmm. is that correct, Eric? So, yeah, that is our anticipation when um, assuming that the state property for the old Rex Hospital site, currently uh, Health and Human Services, that that moves into the private development arena. Uh, the city will work with the developer to, to secure the right of way um, to flatten out that curve. We can't do 100% because part of that goes over into the state employees credit union property. That's right. That's we can, nice. But we can work to, to secure public right of way dedications as part of the site development. So we'll, we'll work to do that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, Susan here. Um, just the same comment I had before. Uh, do we have any idea how many trees we're losing and if we're able to put any trees back while we're helping our pedestrians have a safer environment? I'm going to have to be uh, extremely honest here. We're, uh, we're taking trees and we have no plans to replace trees. I do not know the sum total of the trees that we're taking, but it, we will have a count on the plans before we uh, finalize the plans. A, a lot of these sidewalks are in extremely difficult places to uh, get a flat six foot width behind the curb. Uh, and we're stressed in a lot of places to even get the safety barrier that we want behind the curb. Uh, a lot of places where we're actually uh, we're actually living with less than a six foot buffer in places uh, just to keep the uh, 
uh, most of the time it's a cut slope. Sometimes it's a fill slope, but like so that we're not cutting 20 or 30 feet back into the property on some of these, we're uh, we're moving the sidewalk closer to the curb for short periods of time until we can find a place where it's practical to move it back away from the curb. I, I appreciate your honesty. Um, as a landscape architect, of course, I'm always right. concerned that we're maintaining as much tree cover as we can in the city of Oaks. Um, yes. And I understand that it's not always feasible, but sometimes it is a matter of a retaining wall or a tiny bit more of something or something or utility right. relocation. I, I my, my fear here is that when trees come in last, uh, yeah. you know, they don't ever win. So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all for and I'm excited about the pedestrian win. Um, mm -hmm. But I am, you know, a bit disappointed to hear there won't be any additional trees being placed. And mm -hmm. uh, I understand. I understand the, mm -hmm. the push and pull. I do this for a living myself. Uh -huh. um, but I do think we need to, as a, you know, I think we need to kind of consider how how important are the trees, mm -hmm. um, and um, you know what what might we be able to, what compromises might be able to be made, mm -hmm. um, and at what cost. So but one of the you. things, yeah, one of the things that we pay attention to is uh, we generally purchase what we call a construction easement that's about five feet behind the limits of actual disturbance just to give us a working area. And so if there's a tree that's in that construction easement, that's not in land that's gonna be disturbed, uh, we can consider it for leaving it in. We still run the risk of root damage because if we get too close to the, I mean, you're familiar with like the, uh, the, the root impact area. I mean, some of these oh, trees, yes. yeah, some of these, some of our prettiest trees, the root impact area is already out in the road and there's no way we can stay out of that with a sidewalk, but we do it with, uh, there's different techniques we have for like a boardwalk treatment or a root protection zone uh, type of uh, spanning sidewalk over the roots. Uh, and there's, yeah, but we definitely have uh, changed plans to avoid trees, especially some significant trees. I appreciate that. And like I said, I know it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult, it's a wicked problem. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. This is Mary. Um, I just have one quick question about our, our curb cuts and kind of the radii that we're using and ensuring that those are also rollable in addition to walkable, just for folks that might be in a wheelchair pushing a stroller or somebody who doesn't feel safe on a bike from being in the road. I've noticed, like, for instance, over in Mordecai, and we just got some new curb cuts and they're very 90 degree, <laughs> uh -huh. like sharp curves. Um, and I'm uh -huh. just wondering what the technology is for that. And if we might be able, I'm sorry, do I have an echo on my end? Um, I can hear if you. We might be able to make those more, more rollable. Do you, under, uh -huh. do you understand what I'm saying? I, I do. I'm, I'm more familiar with a wheelchair than I would like to be. And uh, what we're shooting for is to have that landing area that is uh, technically flat. So the, the concept is that a wheelchair can't turn easily on the ramp portion. So we, we don't want anybody to have to negotiate a turn while they're climbing, while they're changing grade. That's on the 12 to one portion. Get them to the landing area and then execute the turning movement. So like it'll, and it feels like a right angle turn because like I cross on a crosswalk, I push hard with both sides to get it up the ramp. The, the ramp. Once I reach the landing, the pressure's off, then I can execute a turn either way. So the landings are really the critical part about making sure they don't exceed that 2% grade. Um, and, and having the landings in the right place. So, and hopefully that's looking, hopefully that's becoming more wheelchair friendly in, in the Mordecai area because of that. And Madam Chair, part of the newer ADA requirements is that we have to do a better job of orienting um, pedestrians mm -hmm. in the path of travel. Um, older okay. wheelchair ramp designs sort of had the whole intersection spread and, and, and big ramps and such. Um, we're trying to curtail right. that and so that the, the direction is as perpendicular crossing the intersection as possible. So there's a, there's an right. orientation aspect of this as well. Mm -hmm. Right. I think that maybe some of those intersections might be starting to go a little too far with that, though. I, I hear what you're saying. I can tell that there was a people were trying to be discouraged from crossing Lake Forest in this instance. But it's mm -hmm. literally, I don't think you could navigate this 90 degree turn with a or without mm -hmm. lifting up the back end of it. But anyway, I, I mean, I will, I'll take some photos. I just want to avoid that when we can, because I like, like the more, the, the bigger 
because it makes it easier to maneuver. But mm -hmm. yeah, I hear you. We can keep moving. Um, any, well, are there any other questions or comments first? Awesome. We'll really appreciate you joining us tonight, Ruben. All right, thank you, Maria. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. Y'all have a good All evening. All right, talk to you later. Bye-bye. What else is on our menu tonight? Dessert? Now, old business, the uh, letter of support for uh, for uh, Mila from last meeting. Yes. Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, could uh, someone make a motion to recuse me from this one item, please? Absolutely. Susan, can you go eat dessert? <laughs> I get, to, I get to go take a break. <laughs> Do I need a second for that? Or? Uh, you, you, you can make the motion if you like, and, and but does does need a second and a vote. Okay. Um, can you take it? Kelly, are you seconding me? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, and we'll do a quick roll call vote. Um, Mary Sell? Here, or I approve that. <laughs> you can say aye. Aye. Uh, Elizabeth Alley? Aye. Kari Barsness? Aye. Kelly Woodall? Aye. Liz Hester? Aye. Nick Neptune? Aye. Pierre Tong? Aye. And Susan Hatchell? I can't I already I already <laughs> muted me. You're fine. Thank you. All right, Mr. Block, you can proceed. All right, so uh, Mila presented at our last meeting, and uh, there was a little bit of, I think, reticence uh, just because we wanted to look at the letter a little bit more. So that went out. That was in last month's agenda with the wrong date. I updated the date, but the content of the letter has not changed. Um, so I think we're looking for the endorsement uh, for everybody so that Mary can sign the letter and send it to David Eatman, who is the, the manager of our transit section. Go ahead. A question. Um, I know when we've talked about this previously, we've talked about some of the design details that they might not have gotten to get street trees, ramp type driveways, uh, materials for paving, et cetera. And um, I trust that they'll be coming back to us again as this project progresses. Is that Paul? If we ask for it, and again, the staff are gonna be involved in some of the design, or at least I expect that we'll be involved um, I know that the BPAC has expressed interest in the station designs in particular uh, as they start to come in. I think the concern was that the multi-use path was being value engineered out to save money. And we want to make sure that that doesn't happen because that's really a key component to getting people to the station. Yeah, as one of the people that was expressing concern, I don't certainly don't want perfect to be the enemy of the good. So I'm, um, I would be in support of just a clean approval of this letter with just kind of the informal understanding that BPAC should be continue to be involved um, in the design details so that we don't VE out the way that we get people to the BRT. So I would uh, I would move approval. All right, Madam Chair, we have a motion. Sure. I was going to see if anybody wanted to provide a second. I can certainly do that <laughs> if that's appropriate. Second. All right. So it's a second from Ms. Barsness. Is that right? Thank you. All right. And we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Alley? Could... Elizabeth, were you un unmuted? Elizabeth, can you hear me? Okay, very good. Uh, Ms. Barsness? Aye. Ms. Woodall? Aye. Ms. Hester? Aye. Um, Madam Chair? Aye. Uh, Mr. Neptune? Aye. Mr. Tong? Aye. That would be unanimous.
All right. Do we want to let Susan back in now? Yeah. I'll make a motion. Okay. All right. There she is. Very good. Uh, our next item of business is reports. Uh, first is the chair's report. Awesome. All right. This month, what did I do? I, I had two meetings and I didn't write them down. Um, I got a second while I think about what I did this month. <laughs> My children are both still alive. That that counts for something. <laughs> uh, uh, the pandemic skinned me all because I was telling you what, I can't remember what date is, let alone what month it is. And I made a note that I needed to say what the two things were done in this month, but I can't remember now. <laughs> Should we just? I I I met. I discussed um some feedback related items twice. I'm sorry. I swear to God. And now it's getting worse. Like they're they're fading farther from my memory. The more I try to think about them. I want to do yes. the rest of the committees. <laughs> well, if um, I may, I know that the madam chair and I definitely met in public at a safe distance away from each other, and we discussed matters of the city and uh, our pedestrian and uh, cycling infrastructure. So I can certainly vouch for that, uh, having participated <laughs> in that conversation I was thinking the about it we have in my bag, um, but I cannot, um, you guys, it's like so far out of my brain now that it's just, I think it's never coming back and I, I do sincerely apologize. Can we move on? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Your next item is uh, committee reports. Uh, uh, there was no, no bicycle committee uh, meeting this month, so we'll move to the pedestrian committee. Okay, we did meet, and it was so nice to, uh, albeit virtually, nice to uh, be with everybody. We um, talked about. Um, now you're doing it to me, too, Mary. <laughs> well, we we confirmed <laughs> our uh, we confirmed our uh, work program for the year, and then walked us through um, some considerations for um, construction closures uh, focused on uh, sidewalks, but the acknowledgement that there is possibility of closing uh, bike lanes too, and um, be working on coming up with some uh, metrics that our development, um, development community and city staff can use to consider when um, sidewalks can be rerouted. And the consensus of those that, of us that were at the meeting was that um, it should be as hard to close a sidewalk as it is to close a road. Um, understanding that there are times when it is avoidable and, and times where uh, safety dictates that you have to, but, but really seeing uh, extended pedestrian detours as a last resort. So uh, hopefully by coming up with some um, fairly stringent met metrics, we'll take a little bit of load off of Paul who's having to review them on a case by case basis now. Um, that's my report. My kids are still alive. My hair is getting grayer by the day. You're muted, Eric, but you want to move on to Nick and the community outreach update? Just what I said, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll pick it up from here. Go for it. Thank you. Well, the community outreach uh, and engagement subcommittee was able to meet outside uh, at Transfer Company Food Hall uh, in the parking lot at a safe distance from from each other. Uh, and you know, really, the topic of conversation, sort of first and foremost, was engagement and outreach uh, amidst the pandemic. And you know, on a related note, we were uh, joined by Cody Stokes, uh, who's serving as like the, the president, uh, sort of, you know, lead outreach chair for uh, the, you know, Cody Stokes of, uh, of the Oaks and Spokes uh, advocacy sort of cycling group. And uh, we had a good conversation with him and, and his crew about what they've been doing since the, uh, you know, pandemic, you know, really got underway here in the states and in north carolina um and i guess that one of the the big takeaways for us is you know frankly our mission our, our goal our you know according to the work plan really is just to get out there and you know speak to the nature of bpac what we do and 
uh, make sure that residents across the city uh, are familiar with uh, with the work and uh, how we can serve them and connect them with, you know, resources uh, whenever possible. Um, you know, I think this past weekend is a good example where just being out in the community uh, and having a conversation with neighbors, um, you know, has brought to my attention this issue with uh, speeding traffic in a neighborhood and, you know, certainly was happy to share that, you know, as a member of the commission, um, you know, I could, I will certainly wanted to hear in, in our public forum uh, from the neighbor, you know, from the resident. And, uh, you know, here we are able to connect her and her family uh, through Eric and, and city staff uh, with resources to address, you know, traffic calming uh, here in East Raleigh. Um, and so I guess separate from that, it, you know, our conclusion or, or at least our takeaway from the conversation was to, you know, sort of stay tuned uh, for outreach and engagement efforts from various community partners and organizations like Oaks and Spokes, you know, as they organize um, events either online with, you know, Zoom calls and et cetera, or, um, or even in person, you know, out on the greenways. Um, so I know, for instance, there's a, a book club meeting that Oaks and Spokes has organized, I think, taking place this Wednesday at 6. I'm looking forward to uh, participating in that. I think I'm pretty sure that's a Zoom call. <laughs> so I look forward to hopping onto that. But I mean, it's just it's really a matter of just being present and available, um, you know, just members of the uh, as members of this commission, um, you know, kind of amongst the, uh, you know, our fellow residents here in here in the city. But uh, and I guess our final topic of conversation was around the work plan. Uh, and again, how it just nothing actually really needs to change necessarily. It's just a matter of how it looks. You know, we're not necessarily uh, out there, you know, physically engaging people as we once were. But, um, you know, we, we're certainly still in a position to uh, be present and available either online uh, or through other forms. So. That was, I think, the long and the short of it. Oh, we welcomed a new member, which was very exciting. I believe, if I, I want to get this correct, Kari Barnesness. It was a it was a pleasure to receive her, and uh, is of course great to have her on the uh, on the commission officially. But um, but yeah, I thought I thought on the whole it was a good meeting. I certainly um I have very positive memories <laughs> of the meeting. <laughs> Except uh, Barbara, Barbara was with us too. Yes, I was. Yes, we got yeah. rained on at the end, but yeah. it was nice up until then. <laughs> well, it made it exciting, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kept it lively. So I do remember <laughs> one of the things, if it's okay to mention, um, yeah. there were a few folks that reached out to me asking about the Wade Avenue crossing, and so I had a little Zoom call with a few folks that were asking. Right, the new where the bridges are being replaced, how we have the multi-use path that's been added. Um, and as we like to have that connect into downtown, there were just some questions about, and I had emailed staff, thank you so much for pinging me back on that, about what that crossing could look like. And just wanted to, to mention that a few, you know, folks in the community, I think would like to see enhanced crossing there whenever possible. And I agree, I mean, it, it's an on-ramp to a highway basically, but can we be, as the capital, that's such a great, uh, pedestrian amenities that are being added along Capitol Boulevard. I do have concerns though about the lack of the stop sign on Harrington Street and the lack. I feel like we need some enhanced signage for those on ramps <laughs> at the very least, you know, like some type of blinking pedestrian um, sign that says watch out for pedestrians. Um, otherwise, folks are going to be coming on, coming in hot, and it's just, it's not, we know how it's going to end. So yeah. I would just like us to be thinking about that. Um, the good news with both of those crossings as we designed them is that they're only crossing a single lane of traffic. So it's not right. like some of the other crossings where we've had crash issues. Um, right. So, uh, and they do have the high visibility crosswalks and the signage, but that's something that we can certainly look at as far as whether or not we need to add additional sign, uh, uh, lighting and controls there at those locations. Um, we have, gone through at a couple of other locations recently and installed the, what are called the rectangular rapid flash beacons um, uh, in this right. lo locations where we've had fatalities recently with respect to the Gorman Street um, Greenway crossing 
and the Sunnybrook Road Greenway Crossing. We've done those as a, as a quick deploy interim step in advance of doing a full hop traffic signal at both of those locations, which is a more expensive endeavor, but the rectangular rapid flash can be deployed relatively quickly. So we can talk to our, our traffic engineering staff and yeah. see if there's an opportunity to look at those at, at these All two right. crossings. Okay, I mean, especially like we we have these big um, ambitious plans to have a bridge, right? Connecting five points into downtown and where, you know, where, the, when will the bridge ever happen? Probably, you know, maybe not in my lifetime. Um, so if, if this is what we're using as our interim solution or our low cost solution, we need to bring better tools, I think, to make it as best as it can be. It, if we do this well, it does start to provide that human connection for folks who are up in five points that are in an mm -hmm. island right now to get into downtown walking or biking. And right now, I think, you know, it's, it, it's getting closer. But I don't think we're where we need to be quite yet. Understood. And there's a lot that we need to do now that DOT has finished this kind of mm -hmm. through the interchange. Uh, there's projects that we're eyeing to look at doing improvements between that linkage and back up Fairview Road and making that connection to five points. Awesome. I would say as, as a motorist, um, there aren't a whole lot of visual cues that this is a people place. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so I think it underscores how important it is for us to design our roads uh, to send cues, uh, not just engineering cues, design cues, um, uh, context of surrounding development that you should, that these are people places, um, because not only are you going really fast when you take that southbound exit, um, you, you would not imagine unless you know about this project that there would be a kid on a bike ever. Where would they right. be going to, right? It's such a, like, it, you guys threaded the needle so well in putting that, that path in there that you don't really know it's there. Yeah, well, let's, let's keep working away at that one and see what we can do with iterative steps to get it to a better spot. Very good. All right. Let's go on. That's it for uh, committee and, and uh, board reports. Um, next is staff reports. So uh, let me offer up a couple of things. One, thank you again for everyone participating virtually this evening. Um, we got a little smoother than, than the time before, so we, we will get better every time we do it. Um, uh, I want to give you an update uh, regarding the city council and the approval of the capital improvement program. Uh, so every year, usually during the month of June, the city council um, reviews uh, the operating budget for the city. Uh, as well as the capital improvement program. Um, and as part of the consideration this year, the city council um, uh, took an action to reallocate about a half million dollars in funding from the streetscape plan, a uh, streetscape program implementation item that was part of the transportation bond and move that half million into bicycle project implementation. Uh, so we are now uh, working to look at um, implementation of multiple projects uh, that will be coming before the BPAC here shortly to look at what we're, what we're proposing to do is to develop a suite of projects that are one effective uh, and two uh, make connections between existing facilities. So we'll be we'll be basically asking the BPAC for endorsement and asking ultimately the city council to take some projects out of order from what were recommended in the bike plan, uh, but on the premise that these are projects now that based on other capital improvement projects or resurfacing projects and new markets that have been put in place that we will um, be able to fill in some gaps and, and put in uh, buffered and protected bike lanes with these. So um, our total budget is about $650,000. Uh, we're planning to utilize uh, some on-call contract services that we have trying to expedite this with a goal of implementation by next summer. So that is, that is where we're headed with those projects. That's very exciting. Um, any questions about that? Okay. Do you anticipate that we'll go to the bike committee for um, discussion prior? Yes, ma'am. It, it was supposed to go today, and we had a lot of revisions late Friday. So uh, you will see it in August at the bike committee. And provided that if anybody wants to join them. Very good. Um, the only other reminder for the commission um, normally the work plan. Uh, is usually adopted uh, for the commission in the June timeframe. Um, obviously, our schedule has been disrupted because of the, the pandemic. Um, so just a reminder to the individual communities. Uh, I know that the um, 
community outreach uh, looked at it, but if we'll make sure that each committee take a look at your portions of the um, the previously adopted work plan and see uh, what we need to carry over and if any other new items need to be added. Uh, and then we need to work on, on hopefully getting a draft of that together at your August meeting. Um, that's all I have. Uh, uh, Barbara, I know that you've got an update regarding the bike share and micro mobility. Yes. Um, so, hey, everyone, I just wanted to kind of run through a quick update on June ridership for micro mobility programs. Uh, bike share and dockless scooters were at almost an equal amount of total trips in June. So that was good to see a little friendly competition there between our two programs. Um, bike share saw 3,818 trips while dockless scooters saw 3,764 total trips. So bike share had a slight lead, but again, still pretty strong numbers. Um, average trip duration remains high with both programs. I think bike share was around 46 minutes compared to June 2019, which was at 23 minutes. So you can see how uh, variations have changed a lot over the past year. Um, scooters were around 21 minutes in June, which was slightly higher than May, but only by a minute. So it's still uh, remaining relatively the same. Um, so I just wanted to highlight this. I think it's great to see these services continuing to be used by the public despite the heat and despite the pandemic. Um, still really strong numbers. Uh, we also saw really great ridership for bike share over the 4th of July weekend. Um, ridership almost doubled from 2019 to 2020, and that covered the 3rd, the 4th, and the 5th. Um, and then almost 100 more trips were taken in this weekend uh, in 2020 than 2019. Um, so again, just wanted to kind of highlight this and show how it's still really being utilized, and that's all I had. And I don't remember if we shared this in terms of our numbers with the commission, but um, um, we recently topped 100,000 trips with the system and 50,000 miles. Do I have those numbers right, Barbara? Yes. Yeah. So we've, we've hit some pretty significant milestones. Um, we are ahead of, I think we mentioned this before, ahead of where Charlotte was um, when we compare program uh, year one versus year one uh, with both, both systems. Um, Raleigh has more um, bikes and bike stations than Charlotte's initial program. Uh, Charlotte is expanding theirs now. Um, and then we also um, are happy to announce that we are entering into a public-private partnership with a private developer who has um, um, purchased uh, two bike share stations from our manufacturer, uh, BWEG and Technologies. Um, uh, one is in, it's, it's the same developer, but two different projects. So we'll be adding uh, a bike share station um, in front of the Longleaf Hotel um, on um, Lane Street. And then we will also be adding a new bike share station on Crabtree Boulevard uh, at the Gateway um, Center. And so we'll be adding two more stations and 10 more bikes to the fleet as part of that, that public private partnership. That's awesome. That's really great to see that happening. So I do have a few questions about the bike share right now, because um, I've been seeing the stations have not been as stocked as normal. And this has been something that's been occurring for a few months. Um, I'm just curious to know, it's great to hear that we're continuing to have station high utilization higher, it sounds like than anticipated of the system. Um, one ask I would have for you, Barbara, is would it be possible for the next bike committee meeting for us to just see a snapshot of that utilization over time? Um, Absolutely. So see the on it that would be yep. great and then I, I would just love to know on um i know that you guys are working really hard to resolve any issues about um distribution of the bikes and everything but just it's frustrating to go by a bike share station and only see two bikes there and then to hear yeah. some feedback that there are some it sounds like some of the bikes aren't always getting um synced up properly charging mm -hmm. etc i just i just you know i want i want the system to shine what needs to happen to make that happen? <laughs> yeah, and Eric and Paul can speak to this as well. We've been working really closely um, with our maintenance and operations provider to get those numbers back up and to keep as many functional bikes out in stations as possible. Um, continuing to work with them to resolve all of the setbacks that we've had this summer and this past spring. Um, so I appreciate your feedback. We'll keep working hard. 
Yeah, that's great. Exciting. Yeah, I know it's expanding too. Yeah, I always like to explain the why just so folks understand what's going on. Our vendor changed the uh, on the on the boots uh, group that was doing the work. We did have Core Logistics had been a subcontractor, and they have brought it in house to their own folks. And again, there have been some hiccups as they transitioned over, but that's the reason behind some of the hiccups you've seen, and they are working to resolve it. Okay, that's great. Thank you all. Uh, Paul, did you have any other reports for staff? Um, I did. I wanted to just very briefly mention that Raleigh did manage to get some shared slow streets open. Uh, we did a pilot with five streets around the city. Um, I probably can't name all of them off the top of my head, but I know a few. We did Morning Dove, which is actually part of uh, the East Mine Branch Greenway on street section. Uh, we did a section of Rose Lane, which intersects with Walnut Creek down in the southern part of the city. Um, we did one just north of Crabtree Valley. Eric, what's the street that we did that on? Do you remember? I can't remember the name of the street, but it, it basically parallels where the Hare Snipe Creek Greenway will go someday to connect up toward Millbrook. Not Rembert, is it? It's Rembert. Or the other one that starts with a W, but I can't remember because I'm yeah. old and I have too much stuff in my brain. Um, and, and there were two others. Uh, one is... Um, Pine View, right off of uh, Avon Ferry Road. Is that the right street? And there's one more that is slip, slipping my mind. Um, it's been a mixed bag in terms of the initial review. Um, the public feedback we've got, some people think it's great. Some people don't want us enticing people from outside the neighborhood to come to a neighborhood. Um, other folks just think it's a waste of money and, you know, if it was fine, why did you put barricades up? So it kind of runs the gamut. It's about 50-50. Our communications department is trying to do some targeted outreach specifically to residents on the street to see if we're getting different feedback from you know the geographic places or not or whether it's still going to be a mixed bag uh, don't know what the final outcome of the program will be at this point um, but again we wanted to we heard a lot of support to get it on the ground and so we managed to come up with a few to try out um, also wanted to talk about the counters. Uh, we are getting counters installed. They'll be both bike and ped counters as part of the resurfacing this year. There's going to be one on uh, the eastern part of Hardemont Drive, and there'll be another one on industrial uh, right behind the Costco. Um, so hopefully when if Parks and Rec is able to formalize that greenway link, we expect that'll have a whole lot of counts. Uh, Hardemont's a suburban location that has um, a fair amount of commercial and some multifamily around it. We want to see what that looks like, particularly on the bicycle side. We had some striping that was done, but never designated as actual bike lanes. Right now, it's just painted shoulder that cars can park in as you go further west and connect into North Hills. We hope at some point we will be able to come back and make those into full-fledged bike lanes. And by having a permanent counter, when we do make that change, we'll be able to find out what the difference is. I know, Mary, that's something that you've been interested in. Um, and again, this one is in a suburban location. That's on purpose. We want to see how these kind of suburban facilities do. Um, and that's it for me. Oh, and the markings were advertised, which includes the uh, the North South Downtown Greenway connector, um, as well as some of the other uh, projects, uh, getting some of the vertical separation on Crabtree and uh, finishing Lineberry and getting vertical separation for the whole thing, including the part that already exists. And I think we're going to get four and a half out of six blocks of Morgan Street with vertical delineators as well in downtown. What's the timeline for those? And will that that won't come from the budget from the new allocated projects, will it? Or no. how will that work? No, it was already allocated. Um, and again, it's been advertised. I don't know when they close the bids and, and start accepting bids. Um, that could have already happened. I just haven't had a chance to talk with Rebecca Duffy uh, or any of the folks, Dan that will implement and the work, but it should be this summer do that or, or fall. Yeah, I would just say, you know, it is it is long overdue, I think, for a, a market our size to have some protected bike facilities. Um, and what can we be doing to share this success with the community? Because I think it is an important first step in that direction to, I, I think we should be not not bragging about it because I think we should have been doing it a while ago, but we should certainly be sharing it and celebrating it. Um, so I would just like to see your department do that. So do that. Yourself a oh, that's a, when we get there. And we, we do have lots of protected bike facilities. They're just behind the curb, not in the street. 
I hear the green is, you know, part of the conversation or the side path part of the conversation. And we need to address the intersection treatments if we're going to count those side paths as a bunch of wins. But um, the pellards are certainly a new um, treatment type in our community and a lot more of that. All right. And that is it for me. Keep it short. Very good. Uh, the next item of business is uh, comments from the commissioners. Anybody? Go ahead. Okay, I have one. Um, Alex, I, I, I have this hand first, and then we'll go to you. Okay. In a second. Perfect. Um, I noted in Ruben's presentation some of those sidewalk projects uh, emanated from a 2013 bond, and by the time they are on the ground, it will have been nine years. Um, and I thought it might be useful for me and perhaps other commissioners at a future meeting to. Um, understand from our staff how bond funding works um you know because you saw that, that they ran out of money so like how does a bond project run out of money and you know where the money comes from um and also i'm so thrilled to see those projects happen and know that we have a long list behind them um and just really thrilled that we tried out the shared street concept um during the pandemic and hoping we can add that to our um our toolbox uh, so that we can uh, keep delivering safe streets um, more efficiently and quickly for those that need them. Thanks. And, and uh, Ms. Alley, was the request to have that discussion at the next uh, commission meeting regarding bonds and bond funding, or is that to have it in the pedestrian committee? Um, I think it would be good for the entire commission to know how bond funding works, sure. um, especially w with the um, hopefully not unrealistically optimistic um, anticipation that we will have a transportation bond in the next few years. So, so understanding how those work and how we can be a part of that. Absolutely. Thank you. Suzanne, go ahead. It's turn. Your turn. Thanks so much. Yeah, you know, I think it, it uh, stems back to the original discussion with our citizen about the puppy and the people trying to be out in the in the neighborhood and things like that. But, um, you know, whether we're talking about puppies, children or adults, I think that with the pandemic, there's been a lot more pedestrians out in the street. Um, I'm seeing a lot more. I mean, the park the parks everywhere I go are mobbed and there's walkers and runners everywhere. And I think it's in everyone's mental and physical health best interest to be out and about where we can be. Um, pedestrian deaths were on the rise before COVID happened. And I just want to remind everyone that um, through dangerous by design that people of color and adults over 65 and people of lower income are at a much higher risk of pedestrian death. So I think, you know, when we're, about, when we're doing our work and we're trying to encourage people to get out and be well, I think we really need to remember that pedestrian safety is an equity issue in our city. Uh, that not everyone has a car, not everyone is allowed a car, not everyone can be a pedestrian, I mean, I mean a, a driver. So I think we just really need to realize it's an equity. It's an equity issue and it's, um, it's more important now than ever. And that's it. Preach, sister. Go ahead, Liz. Yeah, just to kind of piggyback, I guess this is more a question than a comment. Um, when we think about updating our scope of work, how does how does that work and what's appropriate to put in that scope of work? Like, is there some potential work we could or should be doing around creating more equitable spaces? And is that something that we should look at? Like, this is, again, just looking for some guidance as we think through how to what that looks like, or does it look the same? Because this is the only one I've ever seen. <laughs> um, the work plan, so fundamentally, keep in mind that the commission is advisory. Um, right. And the commission advises the city council on what it sees as the best course of action for all things bicycle pedestrian. Um, one of the key things about the work plan is the commission asking the city council for permission to work on a certain suite of, of items over the course of the next year and so um, between that and whatever the city council 
delegates to the commission is what the commission sort of gets to work on. So it's really important that the commission identifies the, the key um, key items and key focus areas that it wants to, to um, uh, spend its time on over the course of the next year. Thanks, that's really helpful. Any other commission comments? Uh, next item is announcements. I remembered the fifth street, it's Fiesta Way up in North Raleigh. <laughs> Nick, go ahead. I was just going to say Oaks and Spokes, as a reminder, is hosting this reading group uh, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Uh, for anybody who's interested in participating. I think I'll, I'll be uh, attending the, the program, so looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you for sharing. And then, Madam Chair, uh, Commissioners, your next meeting will be on August 17th. And um, just to let everyone know, we will, at the end of that meeting, have elections for new chair and vice chair. So be there, be square. Fun, fun ride, y'all. <laughs> that yeah. seemed fast. I know, right? <laughs> what are you going to do? I'm happy to hand over the baton. All right, sounds good. We'll look forward to chatting with y'all in August. Catch you later. Thank you. Bye. Everybody. Thanks, sir. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it.